Daisy Rivas walks between large wired enclosures in a quiet area on the eastern edge of the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Hi guys, good morning. This off-exhibit area is home to a pair of striking white vultures. The male with fluffy white plumage sits on a perch surveying Rivas. The female on the ground, but at a distance. They are such special vultures. They're the only tool using vultures. So they're very smart birds. They use rocks to break open ostrich eggs. Um, they take a lot of the different parts of the carcass that larger birds can't get to. So they just play a really important part um, in the ecosystem. Interaction like this is limited because Rivas wants the birds to keep their healthy distrust of people. In fact, much of the monitoring happens inside a shed out of the bird's sight. There's a cabinet with video screens that monitor all the enclosures. So we have the opportunity to look at a lot of the bird's behavior without disturbing them too much. So we actually have cameras on a lot of our nesting areas. So this is a great view of our nesting area for the breeding pair of Egyptian vultures. An elevated square box serves as a nest. The birds typically clear a flat, rocky area to lay an egg. Inside the plywood shelter, there is a barrier that can keep the eggs from falling. The nest is screened from a pair of territorial palm nut vultures that are in the next enclosure. But it's also good for them to not be able to see these guys um, when they're sitting so that they don't get distracted, but they can see them anywhere else they're perching and they can uh, make sure they're protecting the area from the other birds nearby. The mating pair has done something not accomplished before in North America. They produced and fertilized an egg, which hatched earlier this year. The park's lead condor care specialist, Ron Webb, showed us the trailer where the endangered chick was puppet fed. Jamila, as she's been named, was brought to this feeding station in a small white bowl filled with snuggly animal hair. Those faint squeaks told keepers that she was hungry and ready to eat. We have a one-way the one-way windows in here. So uh, as long as this light's on and this light's off, uh, she can't see us okay. and we can see her. The feedings started with a simple sock puppet and a pair of tweezers. Old world vultures tend to take more food directly from the parents' beaks. Um, they'll eat through regurgitation, but they also take little, little bits. So we do actually pick up pieces of food and, and hand it to the chick. As the bird grew, the sock puppet was replaced by a more realistic one that staff used to care for condor chicks. When they're young, it's easy. Um, when they get older, they start pulling on them and inking and just like they do with the parent skin in the, in the nest box. That tiny tan chick is now fully fledged and a bit nervous with human visitors. Jamila grabs the fence and pumps her wings as if to let everyone know this is her territory. Her dark brown plumage, by the way, will eventually become white like her parents. The vulture's arrival is being cheered by international conservation groups. Yes, it is very welcome to have a broader network of zoos that have that species and can potentially provide um, birds for, for release programs. Stefan Oppel is a conservation scientist for the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. He says more than half of the vulture's population has been lost to hunting, poison, and electrocution in the last 40 years. Captive breeding only happens in a handful of locations in Europe and Israel, and those efforts produce a small number of birds each year. The population continues falling in parts of Europe and Africa, but there are conservation successes. In southern France and in northern Spain and uh, on, the, on the Canary Islands, uh, intensive conservation programs have actually managed to reverse the fortune of the Egyptian vulture by working very closely with communities, by changing the way we build electricity infrastructure. Different types of bugs with calcium. And while it's tough to help correct the challenges the birds are facing in the wild half a world away, Rivas hopes the breeding effort in San Diego will grow here and expand to other North American zoos. She says that'll strengthen the species' chances for survival. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.